Hello my friends, welcome back to my channel Diamonds and Washi. My name is Katie and if you are new here, hello, welcome, and if you are back, welcome back. And today I'm here with my weekly whip and chat. If you're new, whip stands for work in progress and chat just stands for chat. So feel free to whip out your whip and work alongside me. I'm going to be working on a diamond painting and just chatting with you guys a little bit this evening. Um, it's currently Sunday evening and uh, part of a long holiday weekend here in the States. So I almost lost track of the days and realized, oh my goodness, okay, yes, let's let's make sure that we get to sit down together for our weekly chat. So um, I'm going to be working on a diamond painting. Like I said, it's actually going to be the kit called Outside the Sweet Shop from Diamond Art Studio UK, licensed from the artist Helcorio. Um, I worked, I've worked on this on, excuse me, one or two whip and chats recently. Um, still making slow but steady progress. I apologize, by the way, I've got cough drop in, got a bit of a hoarse voice. It's a thing. I don't, <laughs> it just is a thing. Um, summer bugs, but, um, thank you for bearing with me. I'm still really looking forward to chatting with you guys, but yes, this kit is currently out of stock. They have more on order. It was much, much, much more popular than they anticipated by a huge margin. Um, but they're anticipating that the restock is going to be in, I think they said early August. Best way to stay up to date with that, that though, is to follow them on their socials, particularly on Facebook. And uh, hopefully you'll be able to get your hands on this one if you're interested. It's a particularly um, fun kit because it has 197 colors and I am finding myself really immersed in and thoroughly enjoying the challenge. So as far as what tools I'm going to be using today, a lot of stuff from my most recent small shop haul, which is a couple of weeks ago now, because last week we did a kidding up whip and chat. This pen is from Diamond Pen Pal. It's one of their artist series where they got permission from both Diamond Art Club and the artist, in this case, Chrisabug, uh, to create a pen blank and pen that was based on particular artwork. So this is based on Leo by Chris Abug, and I really love the gold swirls in it. And it has the really um, characteristic roll stop flat side. And I had someone ask, a couple people have asked if that is uncomfortable, if that feels uncomfortable to hold. I have to be completely honest with you guys. I still find this pen to be incredibly ergonomic and I don't even notice the flat side. I tend to just rest the flat side against my finger and I don't even notice it at all. Um, so no complaints at all. I am gonna put in a new metal tip. This is the first time I'm using this pen. Actually, that fits snugly enough. I don't think I need to make it tighter with washi tape. If you go to put a multi-placer in, um, I think particularly metal multi-placers, you run into this issue. But if you find that it's really loose and it's wanting to spin and not stay in place, uh, you can take some washi tape and wrap it around the base of the, the metal end that you're putting in, and that will help it fit a bit more snugly. So um, as far as wax and putty goes, I'm gonna be using um, Raspberry Lemonade Patty Wax. This is the regular Patty Wax. Um, I haven't used it in my single placer. Uh, I haven't used it period in a while. I'll be using it in my single placer. Um, and then I'm going to be trying out this painting uh, with pities and crafts. They're pity putty. This will be brand new to me. Um, and I'm excited to get to try a new putty. I'll use that in my multi-placer. This minder is from Galloway's Gallery. I, by the way, when I bought this, I didn't realize it said on here in really little print, trying my best. I just thought this was super cute. And then this tray is, is from a new to me company that I showed in my most recent small shop haul. This is from Bijou Bliss and it has, oh yeah, they, I forgot they had given me minders. I tucked in this tray as well. Um, we'll save this for another day, <laughs> but I love that it has the magnetic bits on it. So you can have the mag, it, the lid magnetically attaches to the top of the tray, or in this case, I'm just going to pop it on the bottom of the tray, um, for safekeeping. And then even this, I think I can just right? I can just, can I just rest that there if I want to? I don't know. I'll figure out something else to do with the stopper, but the stopper magnetically goes in there as well, which is really fun. But I don't, I don't usually use stoppers with my trays, but I'm excited to try out a new me tray, new to me putty. Um, this pen is new, but I have worked on pens from Diamond Pen Pal before and had a really good experience. So let me get this loaded up and we'll get started. Um, today I'm going to start out with just giving you some general like crafty and life updates and then I'm going to be answering some diamond painting tag questions. Um, my friend Rachel from Rachel Ray Craft, um, I'm sure you guys, you guys know Rachel. <laughs> uh, she tagged me in this one. And also, um, I realized that the gal that originated this, who is, let me double check, um, is it Michaela? Michaela Renee had, had sent me an email or an Instagram message a while back that I had missed. 
um, asking if she could tag me when she posted this initial set of tag questions. So um, I'll link to both those gals channels and I think I'll have to tag some people to participate at the end, but we'll, we'll do that second. First, I'll give you some just general updates and chatter because <laughs> I don't want to totally miss out on that. And we'll just see how much of the tag, how many of the tag questions we get through. Look how cute this pity putty is. Oh my gosh. So I feel bad to like totally break it up. Um, but I'm going to try, I might just have to do a little bit of creative filling on the ends. Hold on. I need more flat surface here. Okay. So I think I'll just grab this extra and kind of pop it in the ends here. That smells really good. That's right. This one is scented in just peachy. And it smells just like those like sugary peach rings you can get. I actually really associate those with summer because I remember getting them when we go to the pool and stuff when I was a kid. Every once in a while, it'd be a special treat. We could like get some some candy. It was either the pe sour peach rings or those like really, 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 really long licorice ropes. I think they were just called like red ropes. But no, we rarely got to. We always we always brought food with us to the pool. We weren't spending money at the concession stand. Um, but okay, that's loaded up. That's good to go. We're opening up a new section. This is the top of this is the top of the third row. Uh, or the third column rather, and I broke this into eight columns total, left to right, and so this will not be halfway. Once I finish this fourth column next to it, then I'll officially be halfway done with this canvas. Um, I am enjoying it. I'm through the learning curve. I'm comfortable with the symbols and finding them. I'm very happy with having them organized by color that is making it incredibly easy. There are a couple of things I've thought about switching around. Um, some of the like really close colors that I had to split up a little bit between my three Elizabeth Ward trays that I have going. Um, I, you know, I've thought about doing some shuffling around, but now I'm so familiar with where all the colors are that I'm kind of like, or I could just leave it and it'll be fine. <laughs> okay, let me pull these trays just a little bit closer and we'll be good to go. So hi, hello, how are you doing? How was your, how was your week so far, your weekend, I suppose? Um, if you're in the States, I know you may be celebrating the holiday weekend. If you have any plans, I hope that you are staying safe and um, doing well. I think we're going to try to take the kids to some 4th of July festivities. Uh, different cities out here have um, celebrations on different days, actually. Some have them on the 3rd of July and some have them on the 4th. I actually think that we're going to take the kids out on the 3rd because my youngest does still have summer school um, that will be back in session on the 5th. And I just don't want to, I don't want to have him out too late before he has to like get up early in the morning to go to summer school. So I think we'll probably do some celebrations tomorrow on the third, which will be today for you guys. Um, but nothing too crazy because I, I do have young kiddos and um, they do get worn out <laughs> easily, uh, especially with the heat. We're definitely in full on summer, summer swing here. Um, was that concave? I think this one might have been concave. Yeah, it is. A little scooped out on the inside. Okay. I've been pretty happy with the drill quality in this kit, honestly. Um, there's some trash, particularly in like the dark colors, but it hasn't been excessive. And I think that I'll have plenty, plenty enough to, to finish the kit. It's hard saying though, cause I'm not even halfway through it yet, but um, I'm trying to think, didn't they send out an email recently saying that they had realized that there was an error with one of the, the amounts of one of the colors they had sent out and they were mailing out replacements, which I super appreciated. Like I didn't have to, you know, wait until I got to part and, and go, oh no, I'm running out. Uh, so that was, that was cool. Um, but yeah, this has been a really enjoyable project to work on. Highly recommend if you enjoy a challenge, if you enjoy trying something that's a little different than your standard diamond painting fair, um, a really high color count kit can be a fun way to go. I feel like <laughs> so, um, other projects that I have going though, I did start my my make market kit from Michaels, which we kitted up together last week. And I have to tell you guys, I am actually not unhappy with <laughs> how it's turning out so far. I've just completed uh, the bottom half. It's going really quickly because it does have quite a bit of color blocking in it. And, um, uh, and it's small, <laughs> which is really what I needed. 
Um, so that's going well. And I have to, I have to apologize. I have to issue a formal apology. Um, there's, a, there's some, there's some sarcasm here, a little bit of silliness, but also you know, a little bit of like genuine apology. So last week's whip and chat, I had put, put it up to you guys to help me decide, should I work on the Primrose Alphonse Mooka panel from Distract by Diamonds, or should I work on my paint gem mini set that had all the sort of miniature versions of these different old masters artwork pieces. Um, if you happen to watch my unboxing video where I actually opened up the Primrose kit uh, just a few days ago, I wonder if you would have heard in my voice as soon as I opened it up and realized just how large, how much of a beast that painting was. I don't know if you heard in my voice this year, like, nope, this is not happening. Um, I just, I had in my head that it was similar in size to some of the other Mooka panels that I've unboxed and worked on, which was more like 40 centimeters wide by 120 centimeters tall, which is not small. Um, but this one is 60 centimeters wide by 140 centimeters tall. And even with round diamonds, that just, I know myself well enough to know that I'm gonna burn out if I try to work on that kit. It's too, it's too big and it does have a lot of confetti. It has quite a lot of confetti. I'm sure it will be really, really beautiful completed, but I don't think I have it in me this summer, unfortunately. So even though I think that the the responses from you guys were weighted really heavily in favor of me working on that kit, I just I don't think it's going to happen this summer. And I am, I am sorry. Um, I had every intention of it, but I just, I didn't realize just how big it truly was until I started and when I, when I did the unboxing and actually looked at that canvas and went, oh, there's, the, I just, I can't, I really can't. Um, so I think it's gonna be the paint gem mini set, though I am kind of noodling on some other options just just to see. Um, but yeah, so that's a little, that's a little update on that, unfortunately. Uh, I'm still continuing to enjoy seeing all the different old masters kits you guys are working on. Thanks for sharing them and, um, yeah, it's been a lot of fun. I I had fun posting my little mid-year review over on Instagram. It hadn't even really been on my radar. And then um, my dear friend Jacqueline had, had posted hers that morning on, it was July 1st. And I thought, oh my gosh, that's such a great idea. Um, I don't remember if I've done those in past years or not, but um, Jacqueline had posted hers and put some fun like little stats that she'd answered like, how many completed so far this year? What was the largest? What was the smallest? You know, favorite, most disappointing, stuff like that. So I did put together just a little collage of my finishes and posted that along with my my sort of responses to those, those stat type questions. Uh, and that was fun. I've completed 23 diamond paintings in the first half of the year. And um, I, at first I was like, well, I've had some really big projects going, but then when I looked at what's the largest project I've completed, it was just a, it was like 60, 63 by 82, which I'm like, actually, that's not, that's not really that big, is it? Um, not like some of these 70 by 90 or similar. Um, but I have had my cross stitch conversion going, which is a really large undertaking. And then some kits like this one, even though this one is 60 by 80, it feels like a much larger scale project because of the sheer number of colors and high, high, high confetti count. So a part of me is like, well, the size isn't, <laughs> the largest size I completed isn't really representative of the amount of time that some of these projects took, but that's, it's okay, it's really, it's fine. 23 is still, I think, a pretty, pretty solid number of finishes. I'm not gonna, um, I'm not gonna turn up my nose at that. I did neatly sidestep <laughs> answering the question about what was the most disappointing and I just was like I can't I can't answer questions like this I'm way too much of a people pleaser and um I just I feel like as soon as I put a name on that um that's either going to make a particular shop owner potentially feel like really terrible or I don't know I just don't think there's a good way for that to go so I thought I'm not even if I could pick one um even though there were a couple of kits that I was disappointed with things about the end result the process of working on them was you know there were still things that I found about it that were enjoyable or at the very least were um, a learning process so I just I'm I'm too conflict avoidant to to answer questions like that. Um, speaking of being con conflict avoidant though, I am gonna address one thing really quick because this had come up and I'm 
still kind of a little bit baffled where this even came from. So um, it's fine. But I just wanted to really quickly mention children's toys falling over in the background. It's fine. <laughs> Uh, just because this this came up somewhere and it was a whole thing and I will just in case there's anyone here that that yeah I'm just gonna address something real quick so um, the Castiel Supernatural fan art custom that I did an unboxing of just over a week ago um, I had the full express permission of that artist that I personally reached out to them got it in very plain and clear writing I have literal receipt screenshots that I was required to provide to the shop I ordered that custom from um, that had my name on them and were specific to me before I was allowed to order that custom indicating that I have the exact express permission from that artist for me uh, to order that kit. And I ordered that kit back on May, let's see, uh, May 18th. And at the time, um, the shop owner told me that I think she said one other person had actually ordered it either the same day or the day before. There were there were one or two other people that had ordered it right about the same time because it was a relatively new piece from the artist. Like I think she created it a, a couple months ago. Um, so it did come in relatively quickly because uh, the shop is is pushing enough inventory now that she's ordering more frequently. And uh, I happen to live local to the shop, and so I was able to pick it up right away. And uh, I unboxed it right away because I was really flipping excited about it. Um, I that video is not monetized because uh, part of the agreement with the artist was that it was for personal use. And I even reached out to the artist and let her know, like, I have a YouTube channel and uh, this, this I had posted this unboxing video, it's not monetized. Uh, feel free to go and, and take a look. I am happy to take this video down if you have any issue with it. Um, and I would love to have your permission. It's completely fine either way. I'm just extremely grateful that you gave me the opportunity to enjoy your artwork as a diamond painting. Um, I said, if please let me know if you are okay with me posting, uh, my as I work on this project which I'm planning to do I think this month <laughs> let me know if you're okay with me posting progress on my Instagram and or YouTube channel um, and or this shop's dedicated Facebook group zero problem if you would rather I not it's your artwork <laughs> of course and her response she's been so incredibly sweet and kind and she was just I think she was really taken aback that I even asked like it hadn't even occurred to her she's like oh no like don't even worry about it you're completely fine like you did everything that I asked this is completely fine and she's like I really enjoyed watching your video it was really cool to see and it was cool to see people like other supernatural fans in the comments like being excited about it and I was like yeah, that's what I was going for. Like, let's find some people that are crossover, like Supernatural and Diamond Painting fans. But I was just, I don't know. I was in my head about it. Like, oh, wow. Because I was kind of made out to be like this really horrific person. Um, and like I had done something wrong or something. And so it felt good to just clear the air, talk to the artist. Everything's completely fine and above board. Like, I don't, the shop is doing everything 100% above board. Uh, if you were to try to go and order a custom of the exact same artwork, she would require that you have like your personal permission from the artist that is specific to you getting that custom. She's not just going to mass produce like customs of an artist's work, you know, without each person getting individual permission. So anyway, that's just an FYI. Like I said, I have literally all of the receipts and screenshots if anyone would just, if anyone needs to see them, I got them. So that's that. I'm stoked to get, get started working on that kit hopefully sometime this month. I got in some really fun um, accessories from a small shop that has some really amazing Supernatural stuff. I've got my eye on a couple other Supernatural artists that, that do fan art that I'm thinking of reaching out to and seeing if I can get customs of their work. Like I'm, I'm all about it. I'm loving it so much. So anyway, that's that. Um, but, uh, and also just generally speaking about how people are handling conflict or if you have a problem with someone, I just, I would gently suggest like give people the benefit of the doubt and just be, be kind to people. And if, 
if you know if you're aware that there's conflict happening between others because I, I you guys I don't know what's in the water this week apparently there's a full moon tomorrow slash today um but people are just whew, whew, everyone just needs to take a breath if there's conflict going on between other people just let them let them handle their business like adults don't I know everyone just wants to flock to like ooh, who's got the tea who's got the tea like come on <laughs> Let's all just handle our business and 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 move on like adults. So, um, anyway, <laughs> let me do some quick summer updates. Uh, so we are having a really nice summer so far, in spite of the fact that uh, I've been sick with something for the majority of the time since uh, the kids have been out of school. Um, I feel a little funny about talking about it too much because I feel like people start to get a little bit irritated like okay are you trying to get attention or I'm you know I didn't come here to hear about this so I try not to complain but just acknowledging that's why my voice is continuing to sound funky um, but we've had some some pool days um, we are excited for some fun fourth of July stuff we've tried to look at some other um, fun things we can do out of the house. Um, Adam took my oldest to our oldest to a baseball game uh, this afternoon. They got just some really, really cheap day of nosebleed seats and had just the best time. So we are living our best summer life right now. Uh, we just we had just the best time in the pool yesterday. Uh, we're lucky to live in a neighborhood that we have that community pool. And I about have swim lessons all lined up for my oldest. So I'm excited to get him rolling in that and that I've, you know, taken care of that. Um, I've been doing a decent job with adulting this past week, I feel like. So, um, yeah, no, it's been a really, really good summer so far. And I'm really thrilled that my youngest is just, he's he's making my heart so happy. Uh, I feel like a lot of the work that we've been doing in private speech therapy and with his special ed um, school classes and stuff, we're starting to see him really grow and thrive from that. He's doing a lot of pretend play lately, which um, for autistic kiddos, like that's a big deal. Like that's a really amazing social skill for them to start learning and picking up. But he's, he's doing a lot of pretend play and wanting to loop us in with doing it with him. And it's just it's making my heart so 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 happy uh, he's also just a bundle of mischief we got to keep an eye on that kiddo um it's also very sweet he he loves his new swimsuit this summer which includes like a long sleeve rash guard and he actually just wants to wear that swim shirt that rash guard all the time i think because it's really really soft and silky he's just very insistent that he wants to be wearing it so I'm thinking, oh, maybe I should go to the store and pick up maybe some athletic tops that have a similar texture and feel to them. Um, because maybe that just sensory wise, maybe he just really likes the way that, that feels on his skin. Maybe it's very comfortable. So, I mean, I don't blame him. <laughs> it is really soft and silky. Uh, so I may, I may see if I can pick up a couple other things for him that he would, that, that he would enjoy wearing. Um, but yeah, we're we're doing good. Summer's been summer's been a lot of fun, and I think we have a lot of fun things coming up. It's only just started. It's only just July. Um, I also am really excited. I feel really really lucky. I was actually able to snag um, tickets to a Taylor Swift concert in LA. She really out of the blue um, added a tour date. She was already out here. She had five days, five concert dates on the calendar in LA, and she added a sixth. Um, earlier this week and I had gotten I got a text about it because I was on the original like Ticketmaster pre-sale list and I I was one of the people that did not get lucky in that whole lottery system back when the original sale happened but I managed to get tickets and I had set aside um, the birthday money that I had been given and I just I couldn't bring myself to spend it on something else even though I had not managed to snag tickets back when they originally went on sale. I just kind of kept holding on to it. I was like, I'm, I just have this feeling that maybe something's going to happen or work out. Like maybe someone local is going to end up having tickets, but not being able to go. And I'm going to be able to, to get them like at just retail and not these crazy reseller prices. Um, and so, you know, it's totally fine. Like I know a lot of people <laughs> love or hate Taylor Swift. It's fine. But this is literally a bucket list item for me. And I was just thrilled that I had that set aside that was a birthday gift from 
my mom and from Adam that that I had that was that's what that's all I asked for for my birthday last year. <laughs> um, and I'm thrilled that I had that and was able to snag those tickets. So um, that's happening. It's going to be in the nosebleeds, but I've heard that there isn't a bad seat at one of those concerts. And I'm still I'm on cloud nine over it. <laughs> So even if you don't have to be in my comments like, oh, I hate Taylor. Um, just let, let me love what I love. Let me be happy about what I'm happy about. Um, I'm, so I'm stoked. So that's the beginning of August. So it's just, you know, things have been looking up a little bit lately. And I am ha I'm happy for it. I'm, I'm happy for it. So that's just some general life and crafty updates. Um, let's dive into these tag questions because there's quite a few of them. And if we don't get through all of them today, that's totally fine. I'll just spill over into next week's whip and chat. I'm grateful that this cough drop is working its magic. And I actually still have a voice. Uh, when I was filming my Summer with the Masters intro and outro uh, for that video that, that went up today, um, I barely made it through those clips. And so I, I'm glad that today it seems to be, maybe I'm, maybe I'm on the upswing here. Anyway, tag questions. Rachel Ray tagged me, as did the originator of this set of tag questions. That's Michaela Renee. Uh, so thanks for the tag, ladies. Let's get into these questions. These, there's some fun ones in here. I did look ahead. I have to tell you, I did look ahead because I was like, if there are any that I need to sort of like double check my my gems flow on or something or or think on, then I want to I want to have that that ready. <laughs> so uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna cough here for a second. Sorry, one second. <coughs> <coughs> okay so uh question number one how many diamond paintings have you completed okay so i mentioned earlier that i've completed 23 diamond paintings this year um overall let me see after including june i think 129 129 diamond paintings um yeah 129 diamond paintings and i count like full size diamond paintings. Um, that includes a couple of special drill kits that are a little more, like they might be small, but they're still like, it's not just like, oh, a little coaster or something like that. Um, those, I, that size, that kind of thing where it's like, oh, I could just sit, sit down and do it in, you know, half an hour. I didn't count those. Um, I count even like the paint gem mini set, I count the whole set as one finish. Um, yeah, so that's like full size, full size diamond paintings. So um, question number two, how many diamond paintings do you currently have in your stash? I did look at this number. Uh, it's not totally up to date though, because I haven't updated it in my gems flow in a few weeks. I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna tell you guys this is in the triple digits. Yeah, I need to de-stash. Um, it's a lot. But it doesn't exceed, what's what's the phrase? Stash exceeds life expectancy. I'm not there yet because I've completed 130, almost 130 diamond paintings in three years. Um, and so my stash I could complete in less than 10. Is that right? Yeah. So, you know, it's... It's not, it's not totally unreasonable then, right? Um, it does take up a lot of space and I do need to de-stash though. So um, yeah, so that's, that's question number two. <laughs> By the way, if there are any of these questions that you guys feel like you wanna answer or play along with in the comments section, please feel free to. I am more than happy to, to, to read along with what your answers are as well. <laughs> um, question number three. Uh, when did you begin diamond painting? I began diamond painting on April 1st of 2020. Is that right? Is it April 1st or March 1st? It was April 1st. Yep. And I share a diamond painting anniversary with my dear friend, Jacqueline, Diamond Art Sparkles on Instagram. Um, and we met through Instagram just a couple months later. And, but it wasn't until when we were coming up on our first, I think it was our first diamond painting anniversary that we realized, oh my gosh, we have the same one, that's so fun. Um, yeah, my first diamond painting was a, I don't think this is one of the questions, is it? No, not, at least not not right up front here. My first diamond painting was from Amazon. Um, I, was a, I was a COVID crafter, <laughs> discovered this craft because of that. And um, I saw some, I, like a lot of us, I think this is a story for a lot of people, saw, 
I'm an ad, like an advertisement with time, some time lapse of someone diamond painting, uh, probably from some terrible company like Paint with Diamonds or something. Um, I say terrible because like their quality is notoriously bad. Um, popping drills and unlicensed artwork and yeah. So anyway, I, I then promptly went to Amazon and just was, you know, like a lot of us probably do to try to find something with free two day shipping. Um, I put in diamond painting and like I probably put in Disney or something because my first one is an unlicensed Mickey Mouse piece. So then I learned about licensing not that much later. Uh, but I think a lot of us probably started out similarly where we didn't know about licensing right out the gate and why it mattered or anything like that. We're just like, I want some Disney, Disney theme crafting. So yeah, no, that was, that was me. And I'm over three years in now and I not finding my interest waning at all. I adore this craft. This ticks, this ticks all sorts of boxes for me and is like, this has been my peak special interest for yeah, three years, three years. Um, and I love it. I love it. Love it. Love it. <laughs> I wouldn't do this. I, I wouldn't do what I do if I didn't genuinely love it. So, uh, anyway, that was question number three. Question number four, if you could only purchase from one diamond painting company from the rest of your life, who would you purchase from and why? This goes hand in hand with that mid-year check-in stat that I was like, I can't answer questions like that. The one that was like, what was your most disappointing diamond painting? Um, I feel like I can't answer this question. Um, I just can't. Uh, there's there's too many good diamond painting companies out there that I love their kits and um, that offer such a variety and like opposite end of the spectrum type things that it's just, I couldn't, I couldn't possibly try to pick one. I don't even want to like narrow it down to a top three. So I was like, could I narrow it down to a top three? I don't even want to do that. Um, cause I don't want someone to take that and like run with it or to hurt any feelings or anything like that. So, um, I guess you could just go off of like the companies that you tend to see the most of on my channel. It's not because I'm an affiliate or a friend or a whatever of them. It's because I work on kits that I actually enjoy and enjoy the artwork of. And if you see me coming back to a company more than once, it's not because I'm an affiliate or I'm a friend or whatever. Um, because I'm not going to work on something that is going to give me a headache or not bring me joy or be frustrating. Um, that's just, I don't, I don't work off a script. I don't do <laughs> what people tell me to. I'm, you are getting as absolutely genuine and authentic, um, and exp like an experience or reviews and stuff from me as I can possibly give you. So I guess that that could be one thing is if you go into my post reviews playlist, the, the companies that you see repeats from, it's a pretty safe bet. They're like, yeah, these are companies that I genuinely enjoy buying from and working on the kits from. So uh, that's that's how I'll dodge like giving a straight answer to that question. Sorry. <laughs> um, next question is number five. When diamond painting, what is your go-to media to consume? Audiobooks, podcasts, YouTube, etc. Mm, I rotate through. I rotate through different things. Um, it just depends on what I'm in the mood for. Uh, primarily shows. Primarily I'll have shows going on in the background. Um, right now it's Supernatural. As I joked in last week's whip, I think it was last week's whip and chat. I'm basically perpetually in some stage of a Supernatural rewatch. It's just, it's always there. Um, and I, audiobooks have been big. Um, though I have been, uh, not listening to as much in the way of audiobooks lately, but Sarah J. Mass's books have been kind of top of my list at the moment. I'm in the middle of her Throne of Glass series. I do really enjoy YouTube as well. I enjoy whip and chats. I love going into lives and hanging out really kind of whip and chat style. Um, and yeah. Yeah, trying to support and listen to fellow creators and stuff like that. And then podcasts, sometimes, not not a ton, but sometimes. That reminds me, there's a podcast that Adam had told me to listen to. I can't remember the name of it. I need to have him remind me what podcast that was and go back and listen to it. Um, yeah, I just kind of rotate through what I'm, whatever I'm in the mood for. Follow my nose. 
uh, question number six. What is your favorite category to diamond paint? Landscapes, fantasy, animals, etc. cetera. Uh, fantasy and portraits. Like when I was looking at my, my mid-year check-in, that's a decent, that's a decent representation. <laughs> um, I love fantasy style artwork and themes a lot. And I really, really love just whimsical, dreamy watercolor style portraits a lot as well. Uh, that's what I tend to gravitate towards. Um, animals, I do like foxes. I have a lot of, I've done a lot of and have a lot in my stash of like just cute fox artwork. Um, <clears throat> some fan art depending on the on the fandom which it can be tricky to to find that kind of thing um <clears throat> so that sort of thing i'm not a landscape person <laughs> this this kit is maybe the closest you'll see me get to a landscape honestly um every, yeah every once in a while there will be outliers but mostly fantasy and kind of portraits and sort of those soft dreamy whimsical um sort of vibes yeah um number seven what is the artist you have completed the most diamond paintings from okay i skimmed past this question when i looked at them and i do i what would be the answer to this one um you know what there's probably a few that i've completed like maybe two or three from <coughs> I know I've completed a few by Margaret Morales and Cherry Yuki. I've completed a few from Chris Abug. Um, there's, uh, I was really into Randall Spangler for a while, but I'm not, I don't have as much of a draw towards that artwork as I used to. Oh, I missed a couple here. What was that? Um, ones that I've actually completed. Yeah, probably those. And the follow-up question is, what is the artist you own the most diamond paintings from, like in my stash? Probably Chris Abug, maybe Ivy Jolimore, Cherokee, Margaret Morales. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Um, I have the whole princess collection by Mari945 from Jada Gem Shops. So there's that's that was actually that would actually be an answer too. Um, I basically want to collect every piece by the artist Tosha San from Jada Gem Shop. Um, yeah, probably those. I've You May, I have a lot of You May art as well. A lot of Dakota Deitweiler. Yeah, that's kind of a mix, a mix of a lot of different fantasy artists and portraits and stuff, so. Um, number nine, what is your go-to wax when diamond painting? Well, you guys see me try a lot of different companies really deliberately. Um, and even if it's not necessarily a new to me company like Patty Wax, I mean, I've been using Patty Wax on and off for three years. They've been around for a very long time. Um, I suppose I do still have ones that I tend to fall back on. Not Your Mama's Mud is the wax that I'll fall back on for my single placer. And um, Randa's Crafty Corner as a putty in my multi-placer. Again, these are just ones that have been around for a very long time and are just really firmly established in my brain and really just reliable go-tos that, that work well for how I diamond paint um, and, my, and my climate and stuff like that. So a lot of that kind of thing is gonna be subjective. It's gonna depend on how you diamond paint, literally how hard do you press when you pick up diamonds? Do you pick up your diamonds at an angle or straight up and down? What kinds of placers are you using? So many factors. So just because something might be my go-to, doesn't mean that I'm saying that this is gonna work perfectly for you. It's it's gonna be subjective. So take it with that that grain of salt, but those are the ones that, that I tend to, um, those are my fallbacks, so. Um, number 10, what do you do with your finished diamond paintings? Do you hang them, put them in a portfolio or something else? I have a grand total of one diamond painting hanging in my home. And that was only because I did a partnership with Joann's that involved getting a diamond painting framed. Um, and it was just so beautifully framed. I thought, well, this is just a shame not to, <laughs> to hang this in my home. Uh, so I have that one hanging, but everything else just goes into portfolios. Um, 
I have a few different portfolios. Uh, I had uh, done a ton, a ton, a ton of research a while back. And um, I don't think any other diamond painters had like kind of come across this particular company because it was, it took a ton of digging to find this particular company. And that was Baroque Portfolios. Like when I tell you about the the amount of time I spent researching and digging to find find this company, to find a company that offered um, uh, these really large portfolios with sleeves, it was it was something. <laughs> so um, that one is one that I had found and shared with the community, and I I do really like that one. Um, there are smaller portfolios you can get off Amazon that have sleeves um, and and are probably a lot cheaper too. So, uh, but I do store a, as much as will fit in that Baroque portfolio. And then I do have a smaller portfolio or two for the ones that are small enough to fit in a smaller portfolio. So, um, but yeah, otherwise I just, I just have the one on my wall and I tend to only pull out, um, my diamond paintings when it's like I need to do my year in review or my month in review. Um, yeah, I don't remember the last time I pulled out and looked at diamond paintings from 2020. I should do that sometime. I should do that sometime. I haven't actually fully moved over everything to my portfolios yet because it does make the portfolio very heavy. Very, 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 very heavy. Um, so it's just, it's a little tricky to, to store effectively and then get out and show effectively. It's just, as, it's a lot. So that's why um, I haven't done like a flip through or anything like that. But that would be fun to do someday, for sure. <laughs> um, number 11, do you like to open your kits right away or do you keep them sealed until you're ready to work on them? I keep them sealed. And I know this is not actually what you're really supposed to do uh, because I have seen more than one person. It's pretty rare. It's really rare. But I have seen more than one person share in on like Facebook groups and stuff that they went to open up their box and it had the wrong canvas in it. Um, and so like the idea of that happening with with a kit that it's like it's no longer in stock and you can't it's not ever going to be back in stock it's discontinued like that would be pretty devastating and so i've always thought oh i should really try to actually open up and check the contents of every kit that i get um but i just i haven't i haven't started doing that uh, a lot of kits i do unbox on my channel and so that you know i i am just by nature getting to check the contents but um there have been kits that I've just bought for myself that I haven't unboxed on the channel that I didn't actually open up to look at. So uh, that's on me. <laughs> if, if it's a discontinued kit and I open it up and it's the wrong canvas. So uh, yeah, maybe one of these days I'll do a mass unboxing. <laughs> not on not on screen, like off my channel. I'll just I'll open up the ones that are sealed, especially the ones that it's like I know are discontinued. Just for my own peace of mind. Um, did I get all the color? I did. Next question, number 12. What is your number one unicorn kit that you currently do not own but hope to one day? Unicorn. Okay, I'm going to piggyback. I'm going to piggyback of, off of two of my friends that have had a little discussion in their respective weapon chats recently about the term unicorn. Hold on. A quick water break. Okay, so Lindsay at Emeralds and Fairy Lights did a, as she put it in her women chat title was a rant about this. And then Rachel Ray talked about this when she did the set of tag questions about how the phrase unicorn gets, gets used and it, we see it being used more. Um, and it can be a little bit confusing. And I'll tell you this right up front, you can use whatever words you want, however you want to, you do you. But <laughs> originally uh, the word unicorn was to describe a kit that it was like, this kit is really rare. This kit is discontinued. It's really, really difficult to come by. And so it's your unicorn. It's like, I don't know if I'm ever going to get my hands on this kit because there are so few of them out there and you never see it up for sale. Or if you do, it's for an astronomical price. That's what a unicorn is. Um, whereas I've seen some people referring to like 
they'll get in a kit that was a new release last week and be like, oh yeah, I got my unicorn. And I just kind of do a double take, like that's not what a unicorn is. That's just a new release from last weekend. It's still in stock on the website. But like, maybe it's just they're excited because it's like, oh, this is my favorite artwork ever, or I just really like it. Um, that's not what a unicorn is. <laughs> so uh, my my unicorn kit, I I don't know that I have any true unicorns left. I have a couple of kits that I've thought, you know, if I had the opportunity to buy these at retail, I or close to retail, I might take advantage, but none that are like, I am actively seeking these and I very, 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 very badly want them. Um, for me, for a long time, that was the kit Something About Her by Mandy Manzano from Diamond Art Club. And that was a true unicorn kind of kit because it only had one release and I don't think it was released in large quantities at all. And it was immediately discontinued. And a ton of people were looking for it. And the people that owned it, they weren't, it wasn't leaving their stash. And so you rarely saw it come up for sale at all. And it was never for a reasonable price. And I was lucky a, a year, year and a half ago, I found one. <laughs> and so I, that was my big one. And then it was some of the, the Mandy Manzano princess panels from Diamond Art Club, which also were discontinued, very difficult to find uh, for sale. And my collection of those is complete. So I feel very lucky that, uh, you know, my must haves, I feel like I, I have. Um, ones that I casually am looking for, there's um, some really, really old Diamond Art Club pieces, like circa 2019, 2018. Uh, like the bat cat kit. Um, I have the winged fox and the winged, is the winged pony or the winged elephant? So it's the bat cat and the other one of those. There's some retired Erica the goober mermaids that I would love to find. Um, and <coughs> there's a kit by Dakota Dightweiler that I am having a little bit of regret not buying when it was released called, um, is it? Was it Eden? Eden Floral? I'm blanking on the name of it. But it had lots of purples. Lots of purple colors and tones. Um, but all of, none of those I would call a unicorn because they're not like, I must have these kits. It's just like, oh, it would be nice if I came across these at retail at some point. But I'm not actively trying to find them or, or desperate. My life is not incomplete without them, you know? So uh, that's my little, my little blurb and my two cents about a unicorn what a unicorn is um next question is what is the kit in your stash you're most looking forward to working on i have a couple um i actually i i came up with this idea of a rainy day kit or a set like rainy day kits in my stash um when did i start saying that i feel like pretty early on in youtube my YouTube journey, like probably over two years ago, I was like, this is a rainy day kit. And I was like, oh, that's a really good way to describe um, this sort of set of kits in my stash. Rainy day kits for me are, um, uh, I mean, I use that term to describe kits that have like special meaning to me. Um, maybe it's, you know, a kit that's discontinued and was, was a unicorn. Like something about her is absolutely a rainy day kit. Uh, it might be a kit that just, I am absolutely in love with the artwork. Um, I like, it's perfectly my style or something like that. Or like I said, something that has really special meaning to me. Those are kits that it's like, I want to work on them when it feels meaningful. Um, when I'm in the mood for a pick me up or just when I'm like, I really want to work on something special. Like I worked on um, Daughter of the Sea King, which was the the aerial fan art style, uh, Mandy Manzano pan, princess panel from Diamond Art Club. I worked on that as my 100th kit because I was like, let's make this really special. I'm gonna have this be, I'm gonna pull out one of my rainy day kits for this one. And so, yeah, um, so as far as, I don't know if I necessarily would call these rainy day kits yet, or this one a rainy, rainy day kit because it just came in. But my my custom, my supernatural custom of Castiel, I like that I am really, really looking forward to starting. And, and like I said, planning, I think, to work on some time this month. Um, that's one of them. I have the kit. I've, it's kind of been on my brain. Um, the kit Sleeps with Butterflies by Margaret Morales from DIY Moonshop. And it's from 
their old rendering style. It was a kit I got two and a half years ago. They don't have the same rendering style and process anymore. Um, and But I know that since it is one of their much older kits and it's a, their rendering style that I very much prefer, I know that that kit is gonna be a kit that I really enjoy working on and I adore that artwork. It's so, 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 so beautiful. Uh, so that's a, those are a couple of kits I'm really looking forward to working on, but I don't necessarily, like for Sleeps with Butterflies, I don't necessarily have a time frame in mind that I'm planning to work on that one, but that one just has been a little bit on, more on my mind lately. So um, let's see. Do you prefer confetti, color blocking, or a mix of both? Well, if you listen to my unboxings, you, <laughs> you'll hear me say this really silly and obnoxious phrase. Um, about how I want to have both in my kits because confetti keeps it interesting, but color blocking keeps it moving. And that's so true. I want both in my life. I need both in my life um, because I need. I do need color blocking that's going to help move things along sometimes. But I also I love the payoff of confetti, especially when confetti is done right. I don't mind con the confetti in this kit because this kit is such a novelty to work on, and it's turning out so incredibly beautifully that I don't mind the confetti in this kit, but just sort of more, this is, I think is more of an exception rather than the rule. The rule is more, I want both. I need a nice mix of both. <laughs> um, number 15, how do you pick which piece I wanna work on next? Very much follow my nose. I want to be in the mood to work on the piece. I do try to work on a, a variety of different companies, uh, but otherwise it's just, I'll kind of scroll through my gems flow and go, what am I in the mood to work on? Uh, maybe I want to branch out on something a little bit, or maybe I just have, I just want to be like, let me scroll until I, something speaks to me. So that's, that's my approach. Um, sometimes if, if it fits for an event, great, but I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna force myself to try to participate in all the events because that's a quick road to burn out for just me personally. I need to feel like I have the flexibility to work on what I'm in the, in the mood to work on. So Next question is, what's your favorite season holiday to diamond paint from? Um, I don't tend to gravitate towards seasonal kits, really. I enjoy drills and chills, like Halloween and fall themed kits, um, which yes, that, that is happening this year. I should probably put out an announcement soon, but yeah, I'm, I'm doing drills and chills again this year. Year five, let's go. Um, but yeah, so I do enjoy that. Uh, number 17, do you work on one kit at a time or have multiple whips at once? Um, I'll have up to maybe three whips going at a time, but I prefer one to two. Uh, I don't like to have much more than that going or I just feel overwhelmed. Um, I really like the satisfaction of a finish and I don't like feeling spread thin and like I'm making less progress on things at all. So um next question is neutral slash dark pieces or colorful pieces yes <laughs> both i i love working on hugely colorful pieces like this one that's a, has just a literal rainbow of colors and rainbow look um but i also i like a kit with some really gorgeous neutrals a lot of cherry yuki's artwork is mostly neutrals and i I love it. So both. It completely depends on my mood. Um, large pieces or snack size pieces? Um, kind of both. <coughs> More likely somewhere in the middle. Uh, I tend to tap out around 60 by 80 centimeters. It has to be a really particular set of circumstances for me to work on a kit that's bigger than that. Um, and kind of that 50 by 70 is my favorite, like, size area to work in so really middle <laughs> it right in the middle um and snack size pieces can be super satisfying to work on to just like blitz right through something but uh every once in a while i i find myself well probably more often than 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 some people uh find myself definitely gravitating towards just more epic undertaking kinds of projects because i do love a challenge i do like trying something Try something new and sharing my learnings about how to tackle uh, projects at that sort of scope with you guys too. So, um, yeah. Number 20, place diamonds with tweezers or a pen? Pen, 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 pen. Rarely, rarely, if ever, will I use tweezers. 
I use tweezers to pick diamonds off if there are problems. Now I use a pen. And it mostly a multi-placer, even for uh, sing often for single placing. I'll just load up multiple multiple diamonds and single place them off of a multi-placer. So pen, pen all the way. Respect for those of you that can like pick up multiple diamonds with tweezers at a time. I just don't find it to be terribly efficient with how with how klutzy I am, honestly. Uh, number 21, squares or rounds? I need both in my life. If I only had to pick one, I'd probably have to go with squares because ultimately that's gonna give you a different effect and level of detail than rounds will. Um, but I really, I, I need both. I looked at my Gems Flow app, which that's an app I use to track and store uh, and um, sort out and, and keep track of and sort through my, my stash. Um, really handy, highly recommend it. Uh, but I filtered through it once to see, and at one point recently, <laughs> even with hundreds of kits in my stash, I had the exact same number of rounds and squares in my stash. I was like, truly, I'd, I, if I love the artwork, I'm going to get it. Um, so yeah, both. <laughs> 22, what's your favorite method for placing AB drills? Um, just uh, wax or putty, honestly, as long as it's not fresh. As long as I've been using it for a little while, if it's really fresh wax or putty, um, it's gonna hold on to the ABs too much and they're gonna be a pain in the butt to place. So, but I don't, I don't, you know, I don't really I don't use tweezers or, or switch pens or waxes usually. I just, I just make sure that what I'm using isn't fresh, fresh wax or fresh putty. Uh, putty can be a little bit, bit easier to place ABs with than wax though, depending. Um, I know we're coming up on an hour, but we just have a few more tag questions left, so we might run a little over. Um, what is your preferred method of sectioning off a canvas? I just do washi tape on top of the plastic cover. Um, some people are really big fans of release paper, or they'll, yeah, they'll peel off like the whole canvas and replace it with the release paper or uh, parts of it. I just, I section off, and I'll section off just a row at a time. Otherwise, I find that maybe the washi will start to, to lift off, to peel off of the plastic cover because it's washy by nature is low tack. Uh, so I just, you know, after I complete this column, uh, and then I'm gonna tape off and section off the next column over and I just kind of go one at a time. And I find that to be the most efficient and manageable and help me uh, feel a sense of accomplishment, sort of set, set goals and set, you know, an area to work in and stuff like that. <coughs> Okay, two more questions. Uh, so 24 is, do you have any other crafty hobbies outside of diamond painting? Not really, uh, this is this is really it. I used to really, really enjoy doing puzzles, um, but I don't, I don't have the space for it, especially given having young children, <laughs> especially with my youngest in particular. Doing puzzles would just be, uh, a logistical nightmare it wouldn't be practical but I really really enjoy puzzles but for a lot of the same reasons that I enjoy diamond painting Rachel was saying when she was answering um, I think it was when she was answering these tag questions that she gets a similar sort of mental satisfaction from doing diamond painting as she did with puzzles was that Rachel that said that sorry if I'm misquoting you Rachel or misremembering um, it's a similar mental satisfaction it's a similar sense of like your hands are busy and it kind of frees up your mind. Um, it feels similar to me. I do also enjoy Legos, but that's a much more expensive hobby than diamond painting. And again, not super practical with my little ones, especially because I'm like, no, I want to do like the big complex Lego sets and I want to just do it myself. I don't want my kids helping me. Um, but I just enjoy that, that process. Like I have... Um, we have a couple of really big Lego sets that we had gotten like before we had kids. Like I have the big, the really, really, really big Disney castle. Um, we have one of the Hogwarts sets. We have some others. Um, so that's, that would, those are probably like the closest runner ups, but neither of those are hobbies that I'm actively doing right now. It's basically all diamond painting. <coughs> I'm so sorry. Um, so yeah, I, I don't know, basically a, uh, mono craft jewel <laughs> at this point. Diamond painting, just diamond painting all the time, every time. Last question is who do you tag to do this, this set of tag questions? Um, so in no particular order and just different ones than I saw that Rachel had tagged in hers. 
I am going to tag Lindsay from Emeralds and Fairy Lights and Hannah from Sparkling Spectrumite and Shay from Crafting with Shay. I'd love for you guys to do this set of questions. I will either, I'll copy and paste them into the description of this video. Anyone can do them though. Even if I didn't tag you, feel free to do this set of questions and tag the girl, that, the gal that originated them, which again is Michaela Renee, and I'll link to her channel below. Um, this was fun. Thanks for tagging me, Rachel and Michaela and Michaela for putting together the questions. These are always fun to see. And you guys that listened along, uh, feel free to leave if there are any that you feel like answering yourself in the comments or <laughs> any of mine that you want to respond to, feel free to do so. I, um, I always love reading about sort of different approaches or, or thoughts or whatnot that people, the different diamond painters have. So um, thank you guys for hanging out with me with this whip and chat today. We got a decent amount done in this section. I, like I said, I definitely have hit my stride um, where I feel very comfortable with getting the different symbols, like, and, and knowing what the different symbols on the canvas are, um, reading them and the ones that are similar, knowing which one is which. And I have some a good muscle memory now for where each of these symbols are in the different three Elizabeth Ward trays that I have sitting out. Uh, so I, I had intended to do an update video on this canvas with you guys um, last week, and I just didn't have the voice or the energy for it. So I will s maybe try to do one of those this week. I may be closer to halfway done at that point. And in that video, I'll probably share, share some tips and tricks for tackling a project of this scope um, and my learnings so far. So um, if you made it all the way to the end of this video, let's go with, in honor of our little cute galaxy bubblegum over here, <coughs> a, an emoji that has some kind of celestial body, moon, star, planet, cloud, whatever, whatever suits your fancy. So uh, I hope you guys have an amazing week. If you are celebrating uh, this holiday weekend, I hope that you have a wonderful time and stay safe in all that you're doing. Um, and I hope you guys are all taking care of yourselves and doing well. You guys, oh, I do want to say, love the tray. Really, really, really easy to work with. And I love the colors. Um, I did take the magnet, the lid part off of the bottom part way through just because I kept, um, accidentally wanting to push it off with my hand but that's you know there's just probably a little bit of learning curve there maybe how I pick it up or something um and actually I probably would have benefited a couple times from going ahead and using this tray stopper I just I love how neat and easy all this is that it just goes together really well so definitely recommend checking out Bijou Bliss if you haven't already uh, loved working with uh, this pen and the putty. The putty was great to work with. So check out Pity Putty from Painting with Pities as well. I'll have all these small shops and everything linked in the description box below this video. So go take a look, you guys. Um, let me know how you're doing, what you worked on, if there are any questions you want to answer, and one of those celestial body emojis for those of you that just wanted to lurk and work. And I'll talk to you guys in next week's Whip and Chat and some other, some other videos this week. Thanks for being here, you guys. I appreciate you tons, and I hope you have a great one. <laughs> All right, bye.